Puerto Ricans are told when they're born that we are the result of the mix of Africans, Iberians, and native Caribbean Taino. And we know the mixtures that the Spanish and the Portuguese are composed of. But what is a Taino exactly? The Taino genetic journey. The ancient North Eurasians. This video will be an introduction and a precursor to the real video of the Taino genetic journey. Even though I do not push my research onto this topic, upon reviewing the statistics of my channel, there seems to be a high demand for the revelation of the Taino genetic journey. I don't blame us Puerto Ricans for this haunting uncertainty. There is more likely way less Boricua and Native Americans that know information of this nature than those who don't. Let's begin with the patriarchs and the population groups. In the world of archaeogenetics, ancient Native Americans are classified as evenly 40% ancient North Eurasian and 60% Paleo-Siberian. However, this is a circular definition for those that match the archaeogenetics with the historical. Embark into the past together with me. What is an ancient North Eurasian? I will give you two scriptural versions for their origin as of my investigation. The first sounds better to the ear in my opinion. The first population I want to talk about is that of Edom and the Edomites with Esau as their patriarch, a Hebrew. A man from Edom named Kenaz would eventually become the patriarch of peoples of Edom named Kenazites. These were in the vicinity of Sinai along with the Canaanites who derived from Canaan and back to Ham, the father of Africans who had children with the mother of all the Kenites. This was at a time before they intermarried with the Joktonites, just soon after in Midian, where apart from Hebrews like the Joktonites, who are partial Canaanites, there were also Israelites such as the tribe of Levi. Semites would acquire wives from the Japhetite Hellenics. Practice seen in ancient Egyptian history, highly likely these would mix with Scythian peoples, Togarma and Ashkenaz, and this would happen along immigrations to the north. Through my research, I was able to identify the names of the Kenites, being Kenite broader in definition than Kenesites, the peoples of Esau, Joktan, Canaan, and others like the Cushites, are traceable through their names and the ancient kingdoms that talk about their origins in their records, confirming even more these connections. We are able to trace these peoples through the empires that succeeded them. The name Ken from Kenesite derives from the general Kenites. Kenites are those who carry the seed of Cain. Canaan also derives his name from Cain because the children of Canaan are Kenites. But we can derive both their names with their geographical location, Sion. Versions of Sion and Khan or Ken along the way are Sion, the Sionites. Other words for Sion is Sion and Hyun. Han like the Han Chinese and Hun from the Huns. Khan and names like Hun and Han even connect to Ham, the father of all Africans, himself. These names coincide with the geographical location, with the historical description, and the DNA of peoples who derive from these, like the Huns, who may in fact derive lighter features such as light skin and even depicted as having red hair from the Xiongnu Empire. This is where descendants of Esau, Joktan, Canaan, Kush, and Togarma, along with the Ashkenazi lineages would meet. White or pinkish skin, or rather the many tones of European type skin, is attributed to a genetic mutation that happened to the cultures of the ancient North Eurasians who also compose a great deal of the DNA of the Eastern hunter-gatherers to the West. Much of their DNA is derived from this Eurasian-Siberian component. The more Asiatic or Mongolic in appearance would have been the Donggu and the Indo-European types, the Joesi. This would coincide with the ethnic events pertaining Esau and the creations of three shades in Mongolic skin types. A white one, a yellow one, and a red one, meaning the brown type associated with the Paleo-Siberians and some South Asians. 
This is not accounting for other stories of similar nature, but however can be traced to those similar events. In historical descriptions, the Kenites are described, pale white, to have lived rather savage lives and that they were exiled to Europe. But their cultures can be traced all the way from the Pontic Caspian steppe to Siberia and were not allowed to practice agriculture. They practiced a nomadic lifestyle of hunting. The Kenites, as the ancient North Eurasians, were recorded to have genes for red hair and pale skin at a time when the only skin tones, light brown, dark brown, and black, existed among humanity. This is where the historical truly meets with the scientific. The early version of the Kenites are most likely attributed to what they call ancient hominids in modern science. It is also noteworthy to add these exact supposedly ancient hominids had bigger brains than that of Homo sapiens, being that the genus of anatomically modern humans that has little relevance in capacity being the phenotypical outreach for physical adaptations, for instance, within the dog kind. Chihuahua Great Dane Difference Analogy Harvard geneticist Nathaniel Jensen classifies male inherited haplogroup Q as the ancestor to haplogroup R and attributes them to that of Jarkton. The notion of Jarkton and the Jarktonites is so early that most of this if not all of these basal groups share the same great grandparents and his own brethren, peoples of Jacob, the father of all the Israelites and Joseph, father of Ephraim and the Manasseh tribes would have Egyptian wives which most are from the caste of early Greeks, that in this time they weren't even in Greece. They were in Aram, the children of Laban, the Greeks, that would have most likely been dark olive in pigmentation down into the historical description of early Japhetites in comparison to the dark color of ancient Semites and the Kutchites would have had. The early peoples of West Eurasia to far reaches of Northeast Eurasia were first known as Japhetites, and later on, Scythians. But not all early Scythians are Japhetites. In the apocryphal scriptures, they bring attention to a fourth son of Noah, not mentioned in the canon. But it is said that unlike his three brothers, he had no authority granted. However, he is said to be the real ancestor of a set of Germanic tribes northwest of Europe. And these would be straight Kenites, unlike Japhetites who are indirectly Kenites. Let's analyze the first story further in relation to Esau and compare the difference between the lightest people of the Xiongnu with Jacktonites. Jacktons' descendants migration patterns coincide with that of the skin color of South and East Asians, where the darker types would have also been the majority among the Paleo-Siberians, the descendants of ancient Native Americans. The ancestry of the Xiongnu, however, even with the red hair and pale skin tones, would derive a lot of their DNA from the Canaanites and the Kenites who carried the mutations for lighter pigmentations, as the Sinites. From these, the Sinites would branch off, also known as the Han Chinese, later into modern history. And of these, they would mainly represent the yellowish pigmentations. These are derived from Jarktonites, but from a source associated to Africans, named Sin, Kush, Canaan, and Misrahim and would have mixed with them in Sion, or in Midian, or somewhere along Central Asia for the later Xiongnu civilization. It is most likely the majority of the Levantine haplogroups of the present are not the original. Thus if we have a glimpse of the Samaritans today, the more native ethnic groups to the Levant, it is obvious how some of these are the base for Asiatic peoples. Another example. An Asiatic group in Asia claimed to be of the tribes of Israel and not at all Han Chinese or native to those regions. When I saw this, it reminded me of the Native Americans. The peoples that arose from Sinai, the Sin or the Chin, were known as the Sleepy Ones or Sleeping Ones. This would allude to their small chinky eyes and they were also known for their small size as the small ones, considering that most of Asia or East Asia are of short stature. This was also the case for the pony riding Mongols. It is highly likely that the ancient North Eurasians are the later Xiongnu and the prior Edom and Sion, and would be the ancestors to Altai, Sai, Turkic, Tungustic, and Mongolic peoples to different degrees. 
Their earliest version who ended up resulting in half on the ancient Taino would enter the Americas with the Siberians, both still with darker tones of skin, rather than that of the later Huns, the Hun and the Tungustic for that matter. In genetic differences for the most part, they seem to be mainly or entirely man-made and not genetic drift for the most part of the history, through intended selection, and is an evidence for how all Asians are most likely a mixture of three lineages, stronger depending the location. Semites, Old Arabs and Old Israelites, Old Hamites, Africans named Mizrahim, Sin, Canaan and Cush, and Japhetites, Old Europeans, from Ashkenaz and Togarma respectively. The second story is an old Arabic rendition for what I believe to be the same or similar stories through the different peoples. I still want you to see the similarities between this ancient scripture of old Arabs and the first story that correlates with that of the old Hebrews. It is amazing how within all the stories the geographical location to the origins are the same. We started with Edom, Sion, and Midian. This is all places that are of extreme proximity in this story. The wilder story involves ancient Mecca and the place in Africa. In its narration, it talks about Africans originally had straight hair, but upon entering Africa, they ate many things that it was said changed their hair frizzy. From the first PG story, Jacob was the Hebrew father of all the Israelites, and then Esau's sexual habits with Edomites would create a solid base for many Asian peoples along with the earliest Joktonites and Africans mentioned previously. In this story, the Arabs talk about a man named Jakub, a scientist that had a big head. At the time only, the darker skin tones existed before the Kenocytes. If we compare the scriptures, this is surely representing Edom and Sion, and would have mainly been composed of peoples of Ham, most likely associated with the human genetic group D. It tells a story of how out of anger this version of angry Jakub would create a pale race after taking thousands with him to the island of Patmos, and created this pale race through an evil form of grafting. It says that before reaching the island of Patmos, he began with evil practices along the nautical journey to the island involving pregnant women and the assassination of their darker babies. Many of these people fled from the boat. When they arrived, they would create a 600-year-old society of pale people and red hair or other lighter variations of hair color. This society in 200 years would create a brown race and a red race. Some would migrate away from Patmos. In 200 years more, they had a yellow race. These would migrate from Patmos as well. When 200 years pass, they all move upon reaching the white race. And when they arrive in Mecca, aka Midian, and Sion, along Edom, they cause so much trouble that they become exiled from all of the Middle East to Europe, to live naked savage lives inside of caves, in nomadic hunting lifestyles. The Darker Race even had soldiers all along South Caucasia and all of the borders of the Middle East, just to keep them out. In the first more PG story, Moshe or Moses encounters the peoples called the Kenites. He shows them how to wear clothing, and eventually the Kenicites and the Israelites intermarry. Moses from the tribe of Levi. When we look in history, only the Neanderthal from Europe to Eurasia was the eventual admixture for pale skin among an atomically modern human European genetic recipe. This hominid that lived and intermixed with humans remains are found in the same exact places that the various Kenites are said to have habited. And it is the only thing that would explain the genetic mutations of that of the ancient North Eurasians, later seen in peoples related to the Xiongnu like the Hun. The barbaric Donggu that warred against the Chinese. The Hu or the Tung Hu that destroyed Xiongnu and will be related to the early Mongolic pastoralists. 
Today, the global maximum of Ana ancestry occurs in modern-day Kets, Mansi, Native Americans, and Selkops. However, peoples like the Lithuanians in the Baltic region and some German tribes may derive up to 50 to 60 percent of their ancestry from the Yamnaya, from whom they may indirectly derive a quarter of that from ancient North Eurasians. It is important to note these peoples of Mesopotamic times aren't entirely the same as the people that are harbored in those same regions in the modern era. The more PG, Joktonite, Israelite, Edomite, Canaanite, and Canaanite story, and the crazier Jacobian story all still correlate to that of modern scientific description of hominids, who seem to be the same peoples also according to the DNA revelations. Whereas a group derived from the Ane source like the Jomon of Japan is a clear example of these groups. These, who also share affinity to Paleo-Siberians and close affinity to Native Americans, and carry the D haplotypes. This is also in relation to the patriarch of the Jomon and the Ainu, called Dikla, a Joktonite, and a Canaanite, whose descendants may extend all the way from Hokkaido to Kamchatka, and even Manchuria, and Russia. Today, words like Ke, and Keni, and Sem, Kam, Chin, Sin, Ken, and Khan, and Ura, from of Ur. Both Canaan and Ur closely related to Africa and Mesopotamic times appear in the Puerto Rican Taino vocabulary. Words like Guamikeni, a word that describes the Spanish upon arrival. Does this word mean white Kenite sailors? Among all the definitions, is Taino word for earth ke and ken of the earth may also have a primary function for an ethnic description or identity within ancient times that is used in resonance to its meaning upon the conquest of Puerto Rico officially around 1510 and 1520. The word Ken will be closely related to Kur and maybe Ku and Kor. A Korgan or a Kurgan is the name of the societies of the Proto-Indo-European Yamnaya. In the Taino Boricua language, Kur and Kor might refer to men that seek many women. Therefore, Kurgans and Korokote means the act of male pleasure. Ken can be seen in pre-Celtic times as kin, which is spelled ken most likely, and would be similar to the word kin from being kin and the word king in ancient European times, considering that the rulers of ancient times were mainly of the stock of Kenites, like Nimrod or Gilgamesh, a Canaanite. Being Ken and Sin or Chin, intertwined with ancient Taino Boricua word for sexual intercourse, chinga. And would it mean to do as the chins do and multiply? Kur is also seen in the ancient Indo-Iranic languages. Kur is also present in the name of the island of Guadalupe, just next to Boriquen, Caruqueira, and Cibuqueira. An island of giant-sized Caribs that left their kidnapped women in the island of Caruqueira to sell and cause barbaric crimes. This would be similar to the Kinametsen of ancient Mexica history. Kinametsen. And it was said Yucatan itself is a place name that gives homage to Joktan, the patriarch. That an equivalent for the island of Boriquen would be Yuca Yeke, Yuk, that means the town or the village, suggesting Mesopotamic, Joktanite, Canaanite, and Kenesite. Israelite origins for the Siberian populations that preceded them as well. That is it for this video, the genetic journey of the Taino, the ancient North Eurasians. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This is Abaketo Neborike and I'll see you on the next video.